Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Friday, May 13th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave a comment down below with what your picks are for the games on Friday. Now, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. I'm running a daily $15 MLB best bet, so check that out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Friday, May 13th. For our first game, we're going to look at the evening contest between the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, in this one, we see two starting pitchers with ERAs above six to start the year, Tyler Malley and Mitch Keller, a combined one and eight between the two. Malley is 6.46 ERA, Keller is 6.11 ERA. I do think Keller is the lesser of two evils in this spot. You know, Keller's expected ERA is low at 3.13. I've been a pretty harsh critic of his in his career thus far, but I do think this season has honestly been his best on the mound. He's limited walks to only 3.21 walks per nine. Last year was up above four. Uh, the home runs have been a little bit of an issue, but like I said, I've seen some promising signs from him, just like in that one start against the Padres back on May 1st. Pitched six innings of one-run ball against a very, very strong Padres lineup. And like I mentioned, Malley, 6.46 ERA. That's really come without even giving up too many homers. We've seen Malley have issues with the long ball in his career. And for him to have that kind of ERA without the home run ball, oh, I do worry about him when the numbers regress towards the mean in terms of his home run numbers. And he has given up a homer in his last two starts each, including a home run to this Pirates lineup. So I think Keller is slightly the better option here on the mound. So I'm going to take the Pirates on the money line in this one. In our next game, we see the Miami Marlins hosting the Milwaukee Brewers. Corbin Burns and Pablo Lopez are the starters for this one. Two of the stronger starters in the National League to start the season. Both guys with sub-2 ERAs. Lopez a 1.00 ERA. Burns at 1.86. Now, the biggest issue for Corbin Burns this season has been the home run ball. We know he's going to miss a ton of bats. He's got 50 Ks in 38.2 innings. That's third in the National League in strikeouts. But he's given up four home runs this season. And he's given up a home run each of his last two starts as well. And when you're going up against a starter like Lopez, it doesn't make a lot of mistakes to begin with. It could A solo shot here and there could be the difference maker in this one. The Marlins have hit righties well this season. And I do think Lopez right now is in better form than Burns. So I'm going to take a shot with the Marlins here at home, getting a really good price with who I think is the slightly better starter right now. In our next game, we see the Houston Astros taking on the Washington Nationals. Framber Valdez and Josiah Gray are the projected starters for this one. Now, we don't see an official lineout for this game quite yet, so we could see a pitching change. But if these are the starters that are on the mound here, I do think the Nationals are going to have some value here. I expect them to be the underdog in this spot because of these two teams' records and the Astros well above 500, the Nationals well below 500 at 11 to 22. But uh, I think Gray is the better starter here. You know, Valdez. Although he's got a pretty low ERA at 3.34, he's had issues with allowing too many runners on base. Doesn't really miss a lot of bats, 26 strikeouts in 32 and a third innings. Last time out, he gave up two earned runs in six innings against the Tigers. Not bad. He gave up nine base hits in that one. He doesn't give up a lot of hard contact, but does give up a good amount of contact in general. And, uh, you know, against the Nationals team that has picked it up offensively as of late, I do think he could be in trouble in here. You know, Josiah Gray... Last time out, he faced a really tough Angels lineup. He was able to get through five and a third innings with only three runs allowed. Not too bad against a lineup like that. And before that start, six innings of one-hit baseball, no earned runs against the Giants. Both of those starts on the road. I think at home here, he gives a, the Nationals a quality start. I think the Nationals have a, a solid chance of winning this game, so I'm going to take them on the money line here. Go for it all with the money line dog. In our next game, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Detroit Tigers. Jordan Lyles and Eduardo Rodriguez on the mound for this contest. Now, I really can't trust either starter in this matchup, but I do think the Orioles are playing way better baseball than the Tigers are right now. Detroit's lineup has really struggled as of late, which is surprising when you see the offseason moves that they made and they brought in Javi Baez. They brought up Spencer Torkelson from the minor leagues. We figured this was going to be a really tough lineup to face, but it's been one of the weaker in the American League and the entire MLB this season. The Orioles... You know, they struggled on the road this year, but they went to St. Louis and competed in that series. They were able to take two games in that one as big, big-time dogs. So I think there's going to be value on them yet again in this spot as the dog on the road. They're pitching well. The offense is getting situational scoring done. Give me the Orioles on the money line as the road dog. 
Next up, we see the Seattle Mariners taking on the New York Mets. Marco Gonzalez and Max Scherzer are your starters for this one. Now, this is a big-time pitching mismatch, in my opinion. I know the Mets have not hit lefties too well this year, but Marco Gonzalez has just had too many issues with the long ball for me to even think about backing him in this spot. He's given up four home runs in his last two outings combined. Uh, he's given up home runs virtually his entire career and already eight this season and only 25 in the third innings. Really, really rough numbers there. Only 17 strikeouts this season in those innings. Not going to get it done. Uh, I think the Mets get to him in this spot. And, you know, Max Scherzer, we know about Mad Max. Uh, he's, you know, he struggled a little bit in his last two outings, but both of those were against the Phillies. I think against the Mariners here at home, he pitches well enough to give the Mets a run line cover. So I'm going to take the Mets and lay the one and a half runs at home. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Kevin Gausman and Drew Rasmussen are your starters here. That should be a great game between two pitchers that have pitched really well as of late. You know, both starters, when they pitch, their team has won their game in the last four starts. Drew Rasmussen coming off a start of five innings of one-run baseball with five strikeouts against the Mariners. And like I mentioned, he has been lights out lately. Only three earned runs combined in his last four outings. Kevin Gausman on the other side has only given up one walk this entire season. No home runs allowed. Uh, last outing wasn't the sharpest, but he still only gave up one earned run in uh, six and a third against a good Guardians lineup. You know, in this one, I think I wouldn't be surprised if neither if either of these starting pitchers didn't decide this game. I think this could be decided by the bullpen late. And if that's the case, I do trust the Rays a little bit more than Toronto. We know the Blue Jays have struggled on the road this year with an under 500 record away from home. The Rays have played well at the Tropicana Field. And I think if you're giving them a plus money price, it's really dangerous with a team like the Rays. So give me the Rays on the money line here. I think they get the job done. In our next game, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the San Diego Padres. Hugh Darvish and Max Fried are your starters here. Now, I do think Max Fried is in better form in this matchup when compared to Darvish. You know, Darvish ERA at 4.05 this season, a little high for him. A guy who just, just won a Cy Young a couple seasons ago. And the reason why I think it's so high is because the strikeout numbers are way, way down. The walks are also up a little bit as well. His career average strikeouts is 10.98 Ks per nine. This season, 7.56, so he's really, his strikeout numbers are way down, more than three Ks per nine down. The walks, like I mentioned, are up a little bit, and he's also had some issues with the long ball at times this season, including gave up a home run against his Braves lineup the first time he faced them. Uh, Atlanta with Max Fried on the mound giving up only one earned run in seven innings last time out against the Brewers with eight strikeouts in that one. He started the season slow, but he's picked it up, and he has been pitching really well for Atlanta lately. Give me the Braves at home in this one, the place they play their best ball. I'm going to take Atlanta on the money line. In our next game, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Chicago White Sox. We're going to see Vince Velasquez and Garrett Cole as the starters in this one. Now, I do think this is a starting pitcher mismatch as we have Garrett Cole going up against Velasquez. And, you know, Velasquez has outdone expectations, in my opinion. 3.97 ERA for a guy towards the back end of the rotation. That's pretty impressive for Velasquez, but I don't think he's going to be able to hold up those numbers for much longer. He's in the bottom 15th percentile in average exit velocity, hard hit percentage, expected ERA, expected slugging percentage, barrel percentage. His strikeout numbers are down. The walks are also down a little bit as well, or the walks are up a little bit, excuse me. And I do think the Yankees, a team is top 10 in baseball against righties this year in Team OPS. I think they're going to be able to get to him and make him pay for a couple long balls. We've seen Velasquez give up plenty of home runs in his career. I think this is a spot where we could see multiple off of him. And Garrett Cole, a slow start to the season, but in his last 19 innings, he's only given up one earned run. The strikeouts have been there this year as well. And I think he's pitching a lot better as of late than when we first saw him to start the season against the Red Sox, Blue Jays, and Tigers. I think Cole pitches well against the Tigers lineup that hasn't hit righties this year, 26th in Team OPS against righties. I think Cole pitches well. I think the Yankees get to Velasquez. I think the Bombers win this one on the road. In our next game, we see the Boston Red Sox taking on the Texas Rangers. Nick Pavetta and Dane Dunning are your starters here. Now, there's a reason why the Rangers are the favorites in this game. Who would have thought, who would have thought that the Red Sox would be an underdog to the Rangers at any point this year? But Nick Pavetta is not in good form whatsoever. I think he's been one of the weaker starters in the entire league this season. 0-4 with a 6.08 ERA. I know he pitched well last time out against the White Sox, but we just haven't seen any kind of consistency from him this season. And I don't think it's going to get any easier here on the road at the Rangers. You know, Dane Dunning, he's pitching well for Texas. He's been one of their best starters this season. 3.38 ERA. 
31 Ks in 32 innings, not too bad there. The whip is a little high because the walks have been an issue at times, but limiting home runs, coming off a great start against the Yankees where he went six innings on the road at Yankee Stadium with only one earned run allowed. And a previous start to that, he pitched against the defending World Series champs, the Braves, seven and two thirds innings, only one earned run allowed in a Rangers win with seven strikeouts. He's in great form. Pavetta has not done well this season. I think the Rangers win this game. I think they're the favorites for a reason. In our next game, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Minnesota Twins. Aaron Savale and Sonny Gray are your projected starters. Now, it is always tempting for me to take the Guardians on the money line when they're getting a plus money price going up against a right-hand pitcher like Sonny Gray, but he just can't do it in this spot. Just because Aaron Savale just hasn't been in good form this year, a 9.45 ERA. You know, he misses a lot of bats. He strikes out a lot of batters. 22 Ks in 20 innings is really solid, but he's had a really big issues with the home run wall this year. He's given up at least one home run in his last four starts. He's in the bottom 18th percentile in average exit velocity, bottom 10th percentile in barrel percentage. His velocity is way, way down this season as well. I think a pretty good Twins lineup can get to him here. I know Sonny Gray's best days are behind him, but I think he can give up a quality outing in this spot to give the Twins what they need. He pitched four innings of shutout ball his last time on the mound, seven strikeouts in that one against the A's. I think a similar outing here would be just fine for the Twins. I think they get the job done. I'll, give, I'll take the Twins on the money line. In our next game, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Logan Webb and Jordan Hicks are your starters here. Now, I've really been impressed with this Giants team as of late. You know, they had a little bit of a losing streak, but they played really well against the Rockies in their last series, swept them pretty easily. All three were run line covers. They also were dominant in the last two games of their series with the Cardinals that they had in uh, Oracle Park back in San Francisco. And I think they have the edge in this spot as well. You know, Jordan Hicks, he's pitched well in the opener role, but he's only going to go about three, four innings. And I just really can't trust this Cardinals bullpen to go that deep in this game. Cardinals have not hit righties this uh, have not hit righties well this season. Logan Webb Webb coming into this one four and one with a three point eight two ERA. You know, strikeout numbers are a little bit down, but he's more of a pitch to contact guy. He's really limiting home runs, only one homer in thirty five and a third innings. That's very very strong. I think the Cardinals bats struggle here. I think the Giants can get some offense on the board early on Hicks and, and into the Cardinals bullpen also. And I, I like the Giants in this spot. I think they're the favorites on the road for the for a reason. So give me the Giants on the money line here. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the Kansas City Royals. Zach Greinke and Kyle Freeland are your starters for this one. Now, I got to admit, everybody, when I was I saw the Royals were playing the Rockies this series, and I went to go see who the starting pitchers were for this game, I had to laugh because you guys know, if you've watched from the beginning of the season, I am not the biggest fan of Zach Greinke's current form. I think he's had a great career, and uh, you know he's done a lot, and he's accomplished a lot in his career, but... This season, he's just not my cup of tea because he does not earn virtually any strikeouts. He's really, really pitched to contact. And when you're a pitch to contact guy and you go to course Field, things usually don't work out too well for you. And I don't think that Granke's going to have a very good outing in this one. He's coming off a start against the Orioles where he, gave, he had five and two-thirds innings, gave up 10 base hits. He only gave up two earned runs, so the Orioles really didn't make him pay. But teams usually get uh, burnt when you pitch like that at course Field, especially against the Rockies a lineup that's done so well at home this season. You know, Kyle Freeland's not my favorite pitcher to back, but really doesn't matter who's on the mound for Colorado right now. I got to fade Granke in this spot. I'm going to take the Rockies on the run line. I'll lean towards the over as well. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Oakland Athletics. Chase Silseth and Dalton Jeffries are your starters. Now, I had to do some research about Chase Silseth. Has, I had not heard about him going into this game, and he's going to be making his major league debut. He's 21 years old. He was drafted in the 2021 draft by the Angels, and that was an all-pitcher draft that the Angels had as well. He's pitched in double-A this season. He's had pretty good numbers this year, and this will be his first start in the majors, going up against Dalton Jeffries, who has really struggled this year. 1-5 with a 5.22 ERA. He's given up 18 base hits in his last 10 innings of work, 10 earned runs in that stretch. Strikeout numbers are way down this year, only 19 Ks in 29 in the third innings. You know, Chase Silseth, uh, he could struggle in this one, and I still think the Angels' bats are going to back him up against Jeffries. I think the Angels win this game with Sil Silseth on the mound. Give me the Halos on the money line. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Drew Smiley and Zach Davies on the mound for this one. Now, these two pitchers are very similar in my opinion. Two guys that I really weren't expecting too much this season. 
They both pitched well, both with sub 3.5 ERAs this year. Smiley 3.04, Davies 3.34. Two guys that, you know, like I said, not, not a lot of expectations and two guys that really don't give up a lot of hard contact. Both of these guys are in the upper 90s in terms of average exit velo and hard hit percentage percentile, which is where you want to be, especially for guys that really don't strike out a ton of batters. Smiley only 17 Ks in 23 and two-thirds innings, and Davies 22 Ks in 29 and two-thirds innings. So both guys more pitch to contact, but they're really not giving much hard contact allowed this year, which is you know what you want to see for a guy towards the back end of your rotation. And this is why the money line price for this one is super, super tight. Two similar pitchers. I think I trust the Cubs lineup and bullpen just a little bit more here, even on the road. The Cubs have played well away from Wrigley Field this season. Uh, you know, they're only one game under 500 where uh, at Wrigley Field they've really struggled. So give me the Cubs on the money line here in the lean, but I do think this game will be a close one. In our final game of the night, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Kyle Gibson and Clayton Kershaw on the mound for this contest. Now, I, I would like to take a dog in this spot when you're getting such a good price, but I really can't. You know, Kershaw has just been that good this season. He is pitching like the Kershaw we've known his entire career. 4-0, 1.80 ERA. And I know the Phillies have hit lefties well, but the Dodgers have crushed righties this year. Top five in baseball in team OPS against right-handed pitching. Top five in baseball in isolated power against righties this season. I think they get to Gibson here. You know, he's got a sub-3 ERA, but I'm not sure he's pitching like that all the way. We've seen mixed results from him this year. Uh, the walks have sometimes been an issue for him, and I think, I think the Dodgers get to him. So give me the Dodgers on the run line here. Don't love the price, so it's not my one, of, one of my favorite plays, but I'll take a shot with Dodgers minus one and a half. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday the 13th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment below with what your baseball picks are for Friday's games. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.